In this tutorial, we will create a portrait by tracing over a photo in Procreate, taking inspiration from the design work of Brussels-based designer Raphael Vincenzi, also known as My Dead Pony. This video is a simple introduction to some of the basic drawing tools available. This project took me about 40 minutes to complete, but could take you longer if you wish to add additional flourishes to your own work. This is just an introduction and will require you to further view examples of inspiration and apply design elements to your own work. You can also use the chapter markers in the video to assist your viewing if needed. Let's get started. How to create a graffiti inspired portrait in Procreate. First we will need a reference photo to draw over. Use an image of yourself to personalize it or one from online. I have Jenny here from Blackpink. Second, look online at the work of Raphael Vincenzi. Once you find examples you like, simply tap and hold and select Add to Photos to save. In my saved examples, he uses splashes of color, thin pencil-like lines, sometimes text, as well as doodles. Now that I have some images saved, let's open up Procreate. The first thing we want to do is create a new file or document. We do this by clicking the plus sign here in the top right corner. I'm going to select A4. Our document opens and you can rotate or decrease or increase the canvas by pinching your two fingers in or out as well as rotating it. We will place the portrait photo we saved from before to trace over. Go to the Actions tab or the Wrench icon here in the left hand corner. Select Add, Insert a Photo. Tap which photo you will use. Then at the bottom, select Fit to Canvas. You can also drag the corner anchor points to further enlarge your photo if you need to. Once satisfied with the placement, please select the blue arrow at the top to set the image. Let's get started on our work. The first tool to be aware of is our layers panel in the top right corner. Swipe this photo layer to the left and select duplicate. It's good to make a copy in case you make a mistake and need the original again later on. We can deselect layer 1 to turn it off by clicking in this box. You will notice my layer 2 is selected as it is highlighted blue. The next tool is the eraser. Once selected, you will notice there are several options available. These eraser styles match the pencil tools. I'm going to select Inking, Syrup. On the left here is a slider that changes the size of our eraser or brush. Your pencil is also pressure sensitive too. We have another slider underneath that is for opacity. We also have the back arrow or undo button here to erase the last mark or marks we've made. The forward arrow underneath returns the marks erased. We're going to use the eraser to remove the background of the photo. Simply go around the edges paying attention to the size of the eraser and adjust it as needed. I'm not going to worry about these stray individual hairs. Enlarge and rotate the canvas as you progress so it is more comfortable. Once the edges are done, continue with the remaining areas. Just in case, we should go into the Layers panel and make a duplicate of this by swiping left. It's easier to do this now rather than later as we progress on our work. Turn the previous layer off by unticking the box. So with this recent layer, we are going to select the end. This opens some tools available to us. We are just going to reduce the opacity so it's easier to see when we draw. We then need to press the plus sign here to create another layer to do the drawing on. Our main tool will be our pencil or brush panel. You will see there are several options available. Brush settings can also be adjusted and you are encouraged to experiment with this to your liking. I'm going to use Drawing Derwent. We can also select a pencil or brush color by going into the color picker here on the top right. You see, once I select a color in the sphere, the icon changes to that selected color. You see at the bottom of this window, there are different options available. I'm just going to select black. I'll first test out the size here and then erase it by pressing the back arrow or undo button. I'll start off drawing the eye. For when drawing the curve of the iris, if you hold the position of the pencil at the end, Procreate will improve and steady the curve. If you also hold two fingers down on the screen with your other hand, it will create a perfect circle. 
For the hair, I want to create a tapered line, meaning it gets thinner towards the end. To do this, I flick the pencil away and upwards. One thing to keep in mind with the hair is we want to create value or darker areas. Connected to this is the opposite with highlights. You see in this area, to create the highlight, I will make the same type of strokes as before, but in the opposite direction. This can take some time to get used to, so don't get discouraged if this is your first time. You will notice I am drawing the hair over the hat. Later I will use the eraser tool to clean this up. I'm going to add the highlight in this other area, and I'm going to just draw over the earrings. Since I have the outline done, we can go to the color picker and just drag it into the area to fill. You will notice mine has spilled into the entire drawing area. This can happen if the line work is not a closed shape. It can also happen if you are using textured brushes. You can adjust the threshold for this, but I'm just going to go over and thicken the line. Once done, I'll fill it in again by dragging the color picker. Some of my line work and my color fills are a bit separated. I'm just going to go over them to smoothen them out. Now I will demo using the eraser to create a clean line in this hat area. Since I want a clean line for this, in the eraser selection area, I'm going to choose inking syrup. I can just follow the edge of the hat to erase these unwanted lines. For the other side of her face, I'm going to switch brushes to just experiment and show you the difference between them. Just like the eraser brush I used, I'm going to choose Inking Syrup. The main thing to notice is that this brush has a flat solid appearance that looks more digital as opposed to the previous pencil used, which had more texture. For the nose, let's try yet another brush. You're encouraged to try out these different brushes yourself to see what type you find interesting. I will also outline the lips. To color them, let's try out another textured brush and adjust the size and color. I will then also add some color into the eye area. Let's now try out some painting brushes to add color to the skin. I will select the watercolor brush and test out how it looks off to the side and then erase it. For this next coloring phase, it's good if we create it on a new layer, otherwise it will probably cover our line work. I'm going to go into the layers panel and press the plus sign to create a new layer. This new layer is underneath my black line work layer, so it will appear underneath this line work. I will go ahead and add some splashes of color to my work. So remember in our layers panel we lowered the opacity of the original photo so it would be easier to draw over it? I'm going to turn it up again and turn off my drawing layers. I'm planning on erasing the photo further and just leave the hat remaining. To do this I'll use the eraser again. I'll leave one eye here, as maybe we can do something interesting with it later. If I press this S-like tool at the top, or the selection tool, I can draw around the eye. A boundary box will appear, and I can now move this around to wherever I want. This technique could also be done if you wish to create a collage-like effect in your work. I'm going to select Copy and Paste, so I have it on a separate layer from the hat. In my layers panel, you will notice that a new layer for this was automatically created. I'm going to go back to that hat layer and erase the eye since I now have it on a new one. I will then turn on all my drawing layers again. I need to add some further elements in the background and will create a new layer for this. Notice I put this new layer near the bottom as I want some of these elements to appear behind the drawing. It is perfectly fine if you want yours on top of your drawing. It's all about design and artistic effects and preferences. I'm going to experiment with some spray paint effects amongst others and choose some different colors to see how it looks. 
Rafael Vincenzi often has text elements or doodle elements in his work. I'm going to try this and create a new layer and bring it to the top. I'm just going to draw the letter J to demo this and I'm going to lower the opacity of the hat so it's easier for me to see. I'll also continue and just add some doodle elements, keeping in mind the different brushes and colors so it appears as a more mixed media piece. To save our drawing, go to Actions and select Share and JPEG. It will then prepare for export. Then click Save Image and it will be saved in the Photos app. So I've done mine rather quickly. Reflecting on it, I wouldn't leave the eye as it is. I'd probably do something more interesting with it. Looking at Vincenzi's work, I would add further drawn elements such as doodles, etc. Another consideration is perhaps I would make the portrait a little smaller to have more negative space in the composition and think of ways to further use color to merge those distinctions between the background and the foreground. Maybe, maybe I would also use a smaller pencil size. Mine looks digital and maybe with smaller or more textured line work, it would appear more handmade. At this stage, the most important thing to remember is to experiment. It's easy to change things that don't work, and it's only just a click away. Remember to place new elements on different layers, so as not to affect other areas of your work in case you wish to make these changes. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it helpful and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment or suggestion below. This has been a Boo Video Production.